What's up, everybody, and welcome in to the Under the Hood with John the Hood podcast. I am Jay Hood right there. This is my crazy cousin, Wiley. Wiley, welcome back, brother. How are you? I'm doing well, Cuzzo. How you feeling? Well, I'm a lot better now. Uh, not, now I feel 10 pounds lighter. Not because wow. I just went to the bathroom. Now I'm talking about <laughs> this, this, no, Justin Fields. Yes. Uh, Justin Fields is uh, has been traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we will talk about it right here on Under the Hood with John the Hood. But first, we have stuff for you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. We are on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on Twitch as well. Uh, J Hood Radio on Twitch and uh, all the other platforms. So we want you to not only like this, like this podcast, but also we get a chance to subscribe to it as well. And because oh, we've got merchandise as well. Yes, we have merchandise. We have oh, oh, top shelf under the hood hoodie. Mm-hmm. This is as as because I would say this is restaurant quality. Mm-hmm. Get yourself a couple hoodies. This is still hoodie season. Definitely still hoodie season. So yes, make sure you get yourself a few, and most importantly. Take a photo in in your hoodie. Take a photo with your under the hood products and share them online. Tag hood, tag hood in them, but take a photo. Let him know you, sh- you support him. Like he has supported you for the last 30 years with quality entertainment, great sports knowledge, you know, and everything you want when it comes to uh Chicago radio. So get yourself under the hood hoodie, tag yourself in it, take a photo in it, and tag tag cousin hoodie with it. Next, we have ah, uh, we have the under the hood water bottle. Yes, get yourself. I know everybody. A lot of you all are working out for the summer right now. Some of you are just you know working the whiskey or the vodka, whatever whatever your beverage of choice. You're working that that bottle, and that's fine too. That exercise as well. Don't let anyone tell you differently. <laughs> but instead of you know carrying around that 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 beer bottle. Or you know that plastic silo cup. Pour that shit inside this under the hood uh, water bottle and carry it around. This is also we. It's a great weapon to have walking around Chicago as well. So get yourself an under the hood water bottle. <laughs> yes. And my favorite. This is the under the hood tumbler. You know, great for your coffee. Your tea, your favorite alcoholic beverage as well, and like I've said many times, mine came with wads of cash rolled up in in, in rubber bands. Yes, yours may come in there too, but get yourself a couple under the hood tumblers. Again, take a photo with the under the hood merchandise and tag cousin hoodie in there. Yeah, and then we always save the best for last. Mm-hmm. Save the best for last. This under the hood t-shirt comes in many colors. Get yourself an under the hood t-shirt. You know, it may not have glitter on it, you know, but it's a quality shirt. You can wash it, you can use it many times. Uh-huh. You can different wears, you know, it still just snaps back, snaps back. <laughs> we love we love things that snap back. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> oh, I know you do. Oh, I know you do. I, I was wondering, the blonde that was wearing it last night, does it come with the blonde that you were with last night wearing my T-shirt? It's it's possible. It's possible. So <laughs> you, you may all of a sudden be attracted to the blondes when uh-huh. you wear your Under the Hood T-shirt. So if you're into uh-huh. that, get yourself one. Yes. And so our merchandise, if you're watching on YouTube or on Twitch, uh, it's right there. It's on my Linktree, linktree.com slash jhood radio. That's where you go. Listening on the podcast, that's where you go. It's, the, uh, it's in the bio of this podcast. So linktree.com. Just look around. It doesn't hurt you to just look around. Just rummage. Look around and uh, be part of the podcast that you enjoy. Jhood and Cousin Wiley right here on Under the Hood with John the Hood. You can catch me weekday mornings, 7 to 10 on ESPN 1000. You can download the ESPN Chicago app, Cap and I. Have a fun time every morning bringing Chicago sports and everything else uh, to you every morning at 7 o'clock. So well, there's only one topic today. Usually we uh, delve into the community, uh, yes. talk about community issues and talk about other things in sports. But there's only one topic, and that is Justin Fields being traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, this is for a 2025 six-round draft pick 
Uh, if Justin Fields plays 51% of the snaps this upcoming season for the Steelers, that will turn into a, a fourth round pick. Okay, so we have to be able to, to lay the breadcrumbs first. And again, please leave your comments while we have our conversation on Facebook or on uh, Twitch or on uh, Facebook or on um, uh, YouTube, because we want to read your comments as we go along with this conversation about Justin Fields. That's our only topic today, the Bears and Justin Fields. Cuzzo, the bread, the breadcrumbs, Cuzzo, we got to talk where, about. Where were you when you got the news that Justin Fields had been traded to Pittsburgh? And what was your initial reaction to that? Uh, I was watching, let's see, it's 4 o'clock. I was watching college basketball, uh, getting ready for the tournament. And I was watching tournament games because even though the UIC Flames are done with basketball, I'm, it's still in me. Like the college basketball still. So I was watching college basketball and it came across my phone. And I thought, first of all, let me make sure it's right because if it pops up on my phone, I think that comes from Adam Schefter. I think that comes from Courtney Cronin. Got to make sure it's not a fake. Uh, and I'll tell you about a fake a little bit later on that, I, that did get me on Saturday. Nonetheless, so I was looking at that, and I, I wanted to source it. I text somebody, and it was true that Justin Fields had been traded. So Saturday afternoon, college basketball, hood cave, washing clothes. Uh, and then I just, like, sprung up, just like, what? Like, he's, he's gone? So uh, that's when I first found out about it. You? Uh, I was uh... – well, we know what you were doing. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you were you were you were getting up uh, <laughs> as, as you were towing yourself off. As she brought you the hot towel, what happened? So you know what I got. Give me a second. Give me a second, Cuzzo. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, shut that off. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Shut that off. <laughs> we'll hear any sad music from boys to men. <laughs> and I mean two men. <laughs> so I don't want to hear that. So what the, well, hold that up again for, the, for our audio audience. There's Cuzzo crying into his Justin Fields jersey that he can't return. So, Cuzzo, uh, well, one, I, I figured it was going to happen. Uh, so I wasn't really surprised that he was traded. I was a little surprised at the return, but in the end, I was fine. Now, what when I towed myself off and uh, <laughs> went back into the regular world, uh-huh. I was able to. Uh, I went on social media, start seeing responses, and even yesterday, watching some of the. The, the videos from various media personalities. My thought was, like, I've, I'm sick of the shit. Cause though I am, I was, I am sick of the. As you've heard me say, like, what part of, which one of the thirty interceptions or thirty eight fumbles were your favorite? Because. When we lionize our athletes in Chicago, not maybe in some other shit cities, but in Chicago, they're fucking legends. They've done something on the court or the field to deserve that shit. You know, and here's a kid who you've heard me say many times, he is by far the most talented quarterback when it comes to physical traits that I've seen in Chicago in my entire life. No one comes close to that. But when it comes to the results on the field, he leaves a lot to be desired. So, you know, one of – my mother gave me some – she gave me a lot of advice. One of the things that she told me that, sticks, that has stuck with me since I was a kid, she was like, no one owes you shit. You know, as, the, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a kid, I probably thought that was a little harsh. I was like, what do you mean? You know, but – as I've matured, that advice has carried me through a lot because it's absolutely right. No one owes you shit. And I look at the media, local and national, and the fans, they've been more than gracious to Justin Fields. They've been more than fair to him. 
And then we get to this man has made thirty million dollars over the, the past four years. So if if that's unfair, sign me up for that shit. Sign me up where I can make thirty million dollars in four years and deal with some criticism. And that's all it is. As a as a sports community, we always have to qualify our criticisms of Justin Fields. We have to say, oh well, you know, he's a he's a great kid. He's a great leader. He's a great worker. They didn't put much around him. But no, fuck that. The great ones, the great quarterbacks, the great players rise above their circumstances. They rise above because you don't get to enter a situation like Patrick Mahomes or Andrew Luck most of the time when you're a, a early first round pick as a quarterback. You enter shit organizations. And when you enter a shit organization, you have to find a way to rise above the shit. Not only you rise above the shit, you elevate those around you. And he fell short of that. And because he fell short of that, and we lucked into landing the first pick in the draft, we can move on and draft a guy like Caleb Williams. So I am excited. I am beyond excited for what this new era entails. And that's my that's my mini rant, Kazo. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about Justin Fields. And let's talk about the breadcrumbs that led to where we were Saturday, where Justin Fields gets traded. There's a lot of it. Number one, if you remember the combine, Matt Eberflus, the head coach for the Bears, said that we need to be able to answer the bell in the fourth quarter and to stand up and be able to score in the fourth quarter. He talks about how paramount that is. He didn't say Justin Fields' name, but he, when they said when they're looking for a quarterback, well, you know, what did you need last year? He says we need to be able to score more and be a threat in the fourth quarter. That was one sign. Another breadcrumb is Justin Fields taking the Chicago Bears off his social media. That also is a breadcrumb because people thought, oh, Justin just needs a break. And you know when he when he talked to the Brown Brothers podcast, you know, he didn't want to see any NFL, he didn't want to see any Bears because he had to know at that particular time that was it. That was it, that he was done. Oh, I'm not gonna be a bear anymore. I'll just take the shit off of social media. That's exactly what he did. Also, you think about Ryan Poles and the number one thing, and everybody ran with it because I remember opening the show with that on Cap and Jay Hood when Ryan Poles, the general manager for the Chicago Bears, said, and he said that in a nice, clear voice, he said that I have got to do right by Justin Fields. That remind me of your Aunt May or, or my Aunt Ollie. Uh, we know our own family. We've heard that before in our own family. I got to do right by so-and-so. I got to give her a call or I got to give him a call. Let me do right by them, meaning that I have to do something right for a good person or I owe that person something. And that's what just, that's what Ryan Pohl said. When I heard him say that, it didn't resonate with a lot of people, but that quote rang to me because I heard that as a kid. You heard that as a kid. We've heard that in our family. I got to do right by so-and-so. And so when Ryan Pohl said, I got to do right by Justin Fields, there, there, I said, you're going to trade Justin Fields. You're going to try to put him in a great landing spot. And so what ends up happening is, is that Ryan Poles tried to trade Justin Fields to numerous teams, but he tried to do right by Justin Fields by asking him, and why did he owe that to him? I don't know, because maybe Ryan's a good person and Justin's cool. There were certain teams that Justin Fields didn't want to go to. He didn't owe him that shit. 38, uh, 38 fumbles and 30 interceptions later, you're still doing him a favor? No, I'm going to do right by Justin because we're moving on. And so where would you like to go? He, he There's a couple of teams that Justin chose, and the Steelers is one of them. And the Steelers are like, yeah, we could do this for, for a 2025 pick. But you know why? Because the tape never lies. That's why, because the tape never lies. You, If people can look at Justin Fields and say, this is on Luke Getze, this is on Matt Eberflus, this is on ownership, this is on management. It's on everybody when you underachieve. When I say that, Wiley, I know that doesn't land well with some people because it seems like a cop-out, and it actually is not. The best organizations win together. The worst organizations lose together. It's all, keep in mind, it's all a team, after all. All of it is a team. And for Justin Fields, there was a disconnect between him and uh, Luke Getze because Getze, a West Coast offense guy what he you know what he wanted from justin throw the ball over the middle of the field can't do it can't do the 
defense to throw to middle. But, but here's one thing that Justin can do. He can run with the football. He does have a big arm and throw down the field. But the in-between is what gets you paid. The, the in-between, and the hope is, is that the guy in the, in the right-hand corner of our, of our podcast here, hopefully that guy can understand in-between the NFL. It's over the middle. It's connecting on the sticks. It's the big. It's the big pass. It's running with the football. It's utilizing the running game. It's all that. It's not just a two-dimensional quarterback that can run with the football and can throw it a hundred yards down the field, and more times than not, incomplete. That that's the whole thing with Justin. And you had to make a decision, Cuzzo. I'll end with this, and I want to get your thoughts on this. You had to be able to decide if you're the Chicago Bears. Okay. 10 and 27 as a starter or 10 and 28 or whatever it is, right? He fumbles, the interceptions, not not valuing the football by fumbling it, not making others better. Do we pay him $40 million a year? The answer to the question is no at this point in time. No. that what If it got better, you still had to wonder, is Justin Fields a $50 million quarterback? The answer is no. And that's based on him and the Bears. It is. And – and I think the league recognized it as well. So your first stop is your best chance at success, in most cases as a quarterback, because they're going to pour into you, you know, to help elevate you, you know, to become the best you can be. Now, granted, when you're drafted early, you're probably going to a shit organization unless you're uh, yes. Andrew Luck or you're Patrick Mahomes. So, so it's – you have to show – some consistent flashes, not just pop up here, pop up there. You have to show some level of consistency, and he didn't. So now he gets to go to, you know, a place where the standard is the standard, you know, and that standard hasn't changed in 60 years, you know, especially with uh, Mike Tomlin there. So I think this is great for his career, potentially, because he gets to, you know, learn behind his, his idol. Like he idolized uh, – he idolized Russell Wilson, which which is great. So now you get to learn behind Russell Wilson, and hopefully those lessons that you learn can help elevate your game. So when you get an opportunity to play, whether it be in Pittsburgh or another location, you can become the player that many of us thought you could be because of your talent level. And if you don't, then you know you're just another footnote in in history, like many other really talented quarterbacks. So. I like what Ryan Pauls did. I think that's good business because sometimes just because you can get maybe a little bit more, sometimes it's good for the organization. It's good for your brand when it comes to dealing with, with agents and players. If you take it just a little bit less to, and his and his, what he did to his, by his work, do right by a guy, because let's be honest, Justin Fields is represented by one of the biggest agencies in in sports, it, definitely in football. Yeah. So if you shit on one of their prize players, that could hurt you in the long term. So yeah, if, if you send him to Siberia, and then next you're looking to sign someone else that represented represent there, that guy may or the agency may say, hey, you know what? Fuck you. You fucked us over last time. We need ten million more for this player right here. If not, we're gonna take him here. So I think it was I good just, business. I think yeah, it was good I, business. I, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. If you're Ryan Poles, Cuzzo, you clearly wanted to trade Justin Fields for a second or third round pick. It's not like like Ryan Poles is his bad businessman because you see the moves that he's already made. Now, we can go after him about Chase Claypool, but that, but ultimately, I'll justify it by saying here is R Ryan Poles trying to help Justin Fields yes. by getting this reclamation project. Like, no, it didn't work out, and I would, didn't think it would. But the point is, though, he tried, right? Like, so people think, well, you know, he gave up that draft capital for Chase Claypool. He didn't know he was going to be that type of player or inactive or not a good locker room guy. Right. He thought he he thought that this infrastructure would change Chase Claypool. It didn't work out. And so with this situation, and again, the narrative is going to be what it is. I can just tell you what the facts are. That's all I can do. I know that that doesn't work in 2024, the whole facts thing, because your opinion is stronger than your facts for some politics, social media, sports. I get it, Cuzzo, but I'm just old school. I will just tell you the facts are is that Ryan Poles tried to be able to get better draft capital this year for, for Justin Fields. We can make the argument that he assumed 
that there would be people that would want Justin Fields. But look at the rest of the league. I mean, I have a list here of quarterbacks, and you can go through it, and, and you tell me if Justin Fields is as good or better than some of these quarterbacks. This, this list here is embarrassing of the backups. Yeah. Justin Fields is not garbage. I'm going to make sure it's clear, too. He's not. But the league pretty much told you, yeah, we'll pass. We'd rather go with Sean Clifford as one of the backups to the Packers than Justin Fields. Yeah, we'd rather go with Easton Stick as a backup to the for the Chargers than go with Justin Fields. Yeah, we'd rather go with Nathan Peterman as a backup for the Saints than Justin Fields. We'd rather go with Drew Locke. We'd rather go with Tyrod Taylor. We'd rather go with um, uh, Malik Willis or Jake Fromm or Kyle Allen or Tyler uh, Henneke uh, or Desmond Ritter or Brett Rippon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that rather than to go with the Chicago Bears, uh, rather go, uh, th- those quarterbacks or Hendon Hooker, rather go with those quarterbacks than Justin Fields. That's and, what the league told you. And you know why? You know why? Because oh, because one of the reasons why I believe is because and, he, and Fields complained about it last season. He complained about being asked to think as a quarterback. Quarterback is a, is the position you think when you're playing. Like quarterback is the position you see things in advance, which requires you to think. And when you're on your second stop, expecting a team to modify their system for you is completely unreasonable. They're not – no team is going to modify their system for you on your second stop. Your first stop, yes. If you're drafted early, you know, a team will probably make design a system around you. But when you make it to stop two, no one's designing a system around you when you're a reclamation project. So I think that's where he may have shot himself in the foot by publicly, privately should have complained about what Getty was doing. Publicly, be a good soldier publicly. You know, do the right things because you never know what the future holds. And when you're complaining about things like that, that kind of, that may have hampered you in the future because there are only so many positions that quarterbacks who match his playing style. Lamar Jackson is a great passer. So Justin Fields hasn't shown he can be a great passer yet, but that's a system that could maybe help accentuate the positives for Justin Fields. The Philadelphia system may do that as well, but there are not many of those that exist. So you're going to be asked to play a Cal Shanahan type of play a Cal Shanahan type of system as opposed to the Jalen Hurts or the Lamar Jackson systems. And when you can't do that, you're limiting your options as a player. And I think that he did that. I, I think he was banking on going to a lab. And when a lab was like, hold on, we can get cousins. We can we can pay this man who is, I mean, the king at the at the bank. Yeah. You know, we can get him. Oh, we'll we'll pass on you right now because, until we can see if we can get him. And when they got cousins, they no longer had a, a spot for him. And and now you got polls looking around like, hey, what do I do? So, I, again, for me, and I think for most fans, at least I hope for most fans, any criticism of this kid has never been personal. It's been more no. of, you know, what you want to see for the Chicago Bears. There's nothing beyond that. I don't know him, you know, and we hear all the time he's a great kid. You know, he's a hard worker. You know, um, he, he's a great teammate and all those things, and that's fine. As a fan, I wanted him to be a great quarterback for the Chicago yeah. Bears, and that's where he came up short at, and that's the and that's what matters to me the most. What did you say? You can follow Wiley Johnson on Facebook. What did you say uh, on Facebook? It just Justin Fields for gently. What did you say? Oh yeah, they they gave him they gave him trade him for gently used socks. They did <laughs> gently used socks. Like I was. Wow. I mean, they did, though. I mean, because because there was no room in the end for Justin Fields. I mean, I, I will ask you this, because we have our, and by the way, Jay Hood and Cousin Wiley, if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube or if you're listening on the podcast, leave your comments, by the way, in our conversation about Justin Fields and the Bears. We'll read your comments momentarily. We see it lighting up here in the right-hand corner. Would you rather have Sam Darnold or Justin Fields? Because Sam Darnold, at this point in time, is a starting quarterback of the Vikings. I would take Justin Fields every day of the week. Okay, so 
I don't know what's happening with the Patriots there. They traded Mac Jones for a six round pick. Mac Jones is broken, but yet yes. he's got a job, right? Jacoby Brissett, brother Brissett right now is the quarterback until we get to the draft. I mean, Justin Fields or Jacoby Brissett? Yeah, Justin. I'll take, I'll take Fields. Okay, so we scroll down here and we look at like Will Levis, unproven rookie, not going into his second year. Justin Fields has experience in, in Tennessee. Tennessee's getting better. Again, it's, it's incremental, but they're getting better. Will Levis or Justin Fields? So because Levis has only played a year, I probably will lean more towards Levis because you're like, okay, this this kid could, you know, we just drafted him last year. But so it is not because I think at this point in his career he's better because he hasn't, other than one game, he hasn't he hasn't shown that he can play at a high level. But when I'm looking at when you're trying to forecast, okay, what could this guy be? And you have to decide, okay, I can have Levis for three more years for for next to nothing, or I can have Fields for one year. Who am I going to roll with? I'm going to roll with the guy who I can I can control for the next three years, which is Levis. And Jared Stidham is the Denver Broncos quarterback now that Russ is gone. We got to talk about that dynamic in just a second. Light skin power yes. unites. Um, so we got Jared Stidham or or Justin Fields. Definitely Fields. Okay, so, so yeah. You're gonna you're gonna run down that list, and I'm probably gonna pick Fields in almost every case because those guys don't have their ceiling is very low. Yes. So uh, all I'm pointing out is is that there is opportunities for him to go someplace. Now, some places Justin Fields said I don't want to go to. And by the way, again, Ryan Poles didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that for him. But it's like okay. We're going to put you in a great situation. I'm going to do right by you by sending you to a world-class organization in the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here is a, a, here is a coach that has turned water into wine in Mike Tomlin. And if you don't believe me, look at last year. That nonsense he had to deal with to try to cobble that, that team together to be over 500. I know Steelers fans resent Tomlin, some of them, because they feel like they, they, um, they own the Super Bowl, like they are deserving of the Super Bowl every year. It doesn't work that way for every team. But I'll take sustained success. I'll take that. There's some teams that wish they had that sustained success. I will give you this stat, and we're going to read some of your comments here on uh, Jay Hood and uh, Cuzzo Wiley. Here's something. Listen to this, Cuzzo. See if this resonates with you at all. Here's a stat. This is from TheAthletic.com. I didn't get to this this morning. In the last two seasons, only 43% of Fields rushing yards were – from design runs and 57% were from scrambles. Most of Fields' production on the ground came on passing plays. Now let that sink in just for a second. 43% of Fields' rushing yards were designed from or were from design runs, but 57% were from scrambles, meaning that when you need to put the ball up, 57% of the time he ran. That's a bad ratio. Horrible. It ratio. is. It is because like and, and I think a lot of fans see that, and to some degree, it has been right. They see that and say, well, that's not his fault. That is completely on the offensive line. But we've seen when he hasn't played, I think he hasn't, he missed like five or six games. Quarterbacks who have nowhere near the talent that he has managed to get rid of the ball without getting sacked a million times. So when you see that, you say, hold on, this Peter McKeon. Not, I guess, not kid now. This Peterman guy, this yeah. Beijing, this Beijing kid, or this this Blau, you know, guy. All these quarterbacks who got an opportunity to play when Fields wasn't there, they didn't get stacked that much. They're nowhere near the athlete that he is. They're, no, they're nowhere near the player that he is. Why? Because they got rid of the ball. You have to get rid of the ball. You can't hold on to the ball. And we saw it last year. For whatever reason, we've seen it throughout his career, but for whatever reason, he makes the right read because you can see his eyes in the right direction. He doesn't pull the trigger. He he has the kill shot, and he's like, ah, ah, well, <laughs> no. Let yeah. that bitch go. Let it go. Throw yes. the ball. And, and, and like that's been that's been the issue a lot of the times in his career where he's gotten in trouble with that. So now you missed the open receiver, so now you have to make magic happen, and he does. I mean, he's been phenomenal at making people miss and making uh, sugar, you know, 
out of well turning what is it what's the saying turning uh turning shit into sugar you know I, I'm getting a little old so I'm, I'm I'm forgetting all the countryisms you know shit that we the sugar what are you talking I don't about no you know what are you talking about Cuzzo? what where, I'm, what I'm, I'm messing up the countryisms Cuzzo. like I'm trying to remember them but I'm getting a little old so they're not as fresh as they used to be I bet I was, it was I, I, I bet it was said that way in your house I believe huh. what you just said I think it was it said incorrectly but uh as I know uh Ollie she probably said that and brought, and and just put her own spin on it that's probably a thing yeah oh that happened a lot that happened a lot I was like hold on you don't stare this way oh shit really <laughs> <laughs> all right to your to your comments let's take a look here um chaos k says what's good j j hood oh chaos k is from uh, illinois media school he's an illinois media school alum how do you really feel about justin fields being traded and how do you feel about potentially missing out on mhj who's that mhj marvin, MH, marvin, marvin harrison jr, jr. yeah okay Okay, I thought that was my initials just uh, just scrambled there. <laughs> that, that's what it looks like. Um, so, so Kay, let's talk about this. So, well, how I feel about Justin Fields being traded is is that I have no problem with it. And by the way, uh, make sure as you watch this live, make sure you share this. If you watch on Facebook or if you watch on YouTube, please make sure that you uh, share this with your friends so that way they can jump in the conversation as well. Uh, and like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. It's under the hood with Jonathan Hood. the The bio is scrolling on the bottom right there. It's in my link tree. So, I'll be, so again, that's all we ask. So, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Okay. So, how I feel about Justin Fields being traded is, I think it's the right thing to do. And the reason why is because you're just not going to pass up on the quarterback class twice. If you're not a college football fan, then you may not understand how important it is to be able to think about what's next. It's about what's new. It's about what's next. The way the NFL is able to evolve is, is that you got to think about, hey, I like my team, but what else is out there to make it younger and better? You think the Kansas City Chiefs are just laying back in a lawn chair like, yep, we got Patrick Mahomes, we're good. No, right now they are rabid about winning and trying to win another championship. How do you do that? It's not just acquiring veterans. It's about trying to get better through the draft as well. Who is going to be next after Mahomes and Kelsey and that offensive line and the defensive line? Who's going to be next? They're thinking about it. And so from the Bears standpoint, I find it just interesting that people want to upgrade the head coach and the coaching staff. But when it comes to Justin Fields, it's like, nope, can't do that. And my whole point is, is that you're not going to pay Justin Fields at this particular time, 40 or $50 million a year. It's just not how he's not Dak Prescott. So, and he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not some of these upper echelon quarterbacks. Did the, did the Bears do right by Justin? They did not. But Justin also didn't do right by the Bears because there wasn't enough growth there for 17 weeks for Justin Fields to justify returning for the 2024 season. It's as simple as that. It's about wins and losses. And, and, and again, I can't say it even clearer than this. I said this before, Cuzzo. This was not Paul's quarterback. This is from a previous regime. He was not married to or wedded to Justin Fields. He wasn't the whole time. Oh, I completely agree with you. Cuzzo, what are you what's your what's your thoughts on Caleb Williams and and coming here? Like, do you think he's entering, I guess, the most ideal situation since as a number one pick since uh Andrew Luck? I think so. Uh, well, how I feel about him, based on what I, I saw, Cuzzo, was a, a quarterback that's poised. He was the best quarterback I saw uh, in college football last year. And as I always say, I always have a caveat to a lot of things I say, and that is I'm looking at it through college football eyes. This is what I saw on Saturdays. And I saw a guy that had leadership. I saw a guy that get the ball down the field. I see a guy that's confident. I thought his junior year was probably even better than his senior year. His senior year had some ups and downs. It's going to happen. But that was the best quarterback that I saw. And so what I'm telling you is, is that there's going to be some growing pains. I'm already bracing people for this because, you know, people I want people to give Philip Williams the grace that they've given Justin Fields. This whole time, all the way up to now, Justin Fields is fine. There's nothing to look here. I mean, it's offensive line. It's coaching. It's the sky's blue. I mean, the, the green, the grass is green. That's the reason why Justin – no, 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 no. Same grace. 
because my partner, David Kaplan, you've heard him on the air talk about, they're going to the playoffs. They're going to have a deep run. Wait, hold on a second. Because your expectations are up here. Mine are right here. I want him to surpass right here. If that's nine wins and that gets to 10 wins, cool. Right. right. But it's, he's still a rookie quarterback. And it all has to still work together. Just because the Bears have Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, DeAndre Swift, Gerald Everett, uh, Coleman, Shelton uh, as a center, doesn't mean that that means the Bears are going to go to the Super Bowl next year. I, I hope they make the playoffs. But the young quarterback still has to learn timing and, like, the NFL rhythm and all this other stuff because that's, that's not the complete package in year one. It was for C.J. Stroud for one year, but that's more of an outlier than anything else. So what I'm saying is, is that I think he has the tools to be on that level of Andrew Luck. But, again, we have to see how it works out. I hope it does. No, I, um, I, I, I agree with all – go ahead. No, I agree with all of what you said because I, I think a lot of times we we forget that there is an adjustment. There's a, a different speed to the game that players have to adjust to when they make it to the NFL, you know, and there are things that they were not asked to do in college as far as play calling, as, as far as adjustments, as far as even just simple as being under center. Like I think he was in shotgun like 98% of the time. So you're not going to be in shotgun – 98% of the time in the NFL, so you're going to have to figure out how to play under center as well. So I think that, yeah, he may come in the league and, and, and exceed C.J. Stroud, but you can't expect that to happen. You have to understand that, you know, there may be some some growing pain. He's going to take some lumps. Most rookies do, and, and that part is okay. But I think what's disappointed me as, as a city is that, we decided in order to elevate Justin Fields, we had to tear down Caleb Williams, you know, to the point where, you know, it, it, it was personal. Everything became personal about the kid. Even, even the media reports were, were bullshit. And those became, became personal. Like you're making up stories. Why the fuck are you lying about not, not making it, not like just exaggerating some things. Why are you lying about what this kid did or what this kid, the type of person he is, when everyone around him says something completely different? If you heard him speak before, you would have realized he's not whatever you're depicting him to be. But that's what we did as a as a city. We was like, oh well, he's this, and then fans here are like, oh, I don't want a guy. He's a diva. How do you know that? Well, they yeah. said, who was they? Right. Like, and, and that became and I felt like, you know, I won't use, you know, the, the word, but like there was. It felt like they were, were taking him down, you know, taking him down, you know, or or hanging him in a way that for a kid is it's unfair. Like when he gets to the league, if, if for whatever reason he becomes some diva or he doesn't play up to the standard that we expect. You have every right to criticize him, but to manufacture bullshit about him was completely unfair, you know. And I, I felt like as a city, we should have done better than that. And hopefully, we do better than that going forward. Chaos K also has uh, potentially move, uh, missing out on MHJ talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. That doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother me. The, yeah, what I love, and and this is why it's an adjustment for some Bears fans. They're like, wait, we got Keenan Allen too? Yeah. Now, Keenan Allen, I would say that the, he's toward the back end of his career, and I don't expect him to be here more than a couple years, quite frankly, but that's a veteran wide receiver for Caleb Williams to throw to, along with DJ Moore, bookend wide receivers. That works now. At, at nine, the Bears can still get a wide receiver that they like. Imagine if Adunze is there at nine. That could very well be the case. And, by the way, we are not, we're, we're so hyper-focused on the quarterback spot this is a rich wide receiver draft too. Yes, uh, yes. So, so no one's talking about that, right? And so there could be wide receivers late in the first, early in the second, or, or in, on day one or day two that the Bears could be able to pick up. I want them to upgrade that because uh, Ken Allen's one one thing. I mean, but DJ Moore, 90 receptions, 1,200 yards in 2023. I mean, that's an embarrassment of riches, I think, for uh, for Caleb Williams. And also a great running game, a veteran with DeAndre Swift. I thought the running back room was fine yeah, the way it, it was. Because it well. I thought 
because but before Swift, Cuzzo, because I was thinking, okay, you're fine with a running game. I mean, I like Khalil Herbert. You like Khalil Herbert. I think Roshan Johnson could be something. But Ryan Pohl said, no, let me just add just a little bit of sprinkle with a veteran. So that way, maybe it's three running backs or maybe this puts pressure on Khalil Herbert. But Roshan Johnson's here to stay. Yes. And so with DeAndre Swift as a Georgia Bulldog, I'm, you know how I am. You know, I love it. Um, uh, we've got uh, KLX Rose says that I thought that they could have traded him to the Chargers, maybe a trade for Bosa. You, you, maybe Pulse picked up the, the phone and asked. Right. Who knows? Who knows on YouTube? Uh, Jim Marcus says that in the end, it was three years of making a difference. Great athlete, but in the end, in the end twice, uh, being a good – to great quarterback in the NFL is you have to make players around you better by your play. There's no question. Give the receivers a chance to make uh, plays, get rid of the ball quicker, makes your offensive line better, especially in the stats. It's about results and wins. Well said. Yeah, Jim Zach, absolutely right. Absolutely right. You, 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 you've got to get the ball out. And, and Justin Fields it was sitting back there in the pocket 2.7 seconds. Tom Brady says you got to get the ball out in two seconds or less. Now, and, and again, it's not like he had world class wide receivers and running backs, but for Brady, it was I think it was 2.2. And um, the stats say, and again, it's not like I had a stopwatch, like Justin Fields took the longest time to get the ball out of any starting quarterback in the NFL. He still yeah. hadn't got, and then it's, it's not just him patting the ball. That's another thing. Catch it, pat the ball. And then the hitch. Don't forget that shit. This this whole thing. I remember being at Lake Forest. I was at at Bears camp. Did you did you take uh, my cousin to Bears camp this year? Past no, year? we didn't get a chance. We didn't get we didn't get the uh, the you know now since they've been at Hallis Hall, it's hard to get the tickets. So you know, yeah. If you, I guess you if you don't show up, you know, at exactly at the perfect time, you know, they're they're all gone. So that sucks. I'll, I'll, hopefully this year. Well, definitely you gotta get it this year, this oh, upcoming yeah. season. Because yeah. oh my god, right? Um, but what I noticed, I walked on the field, sat in there, and, and there was they had this package of plays for blasting game, the fullback. I don't know why, uh, but they had this package of plays. And Justin went back to pass. This is in July. Goes back to pass, and then this hitch stuff where it's like it's this. I can't get it all in the screen, but it's just kind of like. Like this hitch, and I'm just kind of like, and I was told before the season that they were working on that. It's just like, what does he? And I went to one of the reports, like, is he still with this shit? This whole thing with the the hitch, or just like it's it's not this, Wiley. It's not getting the ball out quickly. It's not three quarters. It's not underneath. It's just this pitcher's arm hitch that he has. That's just like another a second, right, for the defenders right. to get after him, and so. I was like, oh, God, he's still doing this. But Jim is right about that. I mean, it's about wins and losses. Uh, Jamie Salmon says that uh, this is the best fit for Fields to succeed and become the starter he can be. No question. No Absolutely. question. Which brings, us, which brings us to Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, the, the odd buddy cop movie that we're going to get here between these two. Ah, Cuzzo. So, and by the way, leave your comments in the uh, in the chat. We'll read your comments along on Facebook and on YouTube. Make sure you, you uh, share this video, share this show with your friends on social media. So, Russell Wilson. Now, here's a guy that's in his last opportunity to be a starter, I feel like, in the NFL. Even though his numbers were good with Denver, I can just spell it all out here now because I'm not going to get interrupted uh, like I do on the radio. So, what I was told, Cuzzo, is that Russell Wilson had his own office in the facility in Denver. And the head coach of the Denver Broncos, Sean Payton, said, no, you're going to be with your teammates. You're not going to have an office with three screens and a comfortable chair, sitting back doing rewind and fast forward, rewind and fast forward like you're a GM. You don't own this place. Get your ass down there and, and be with your teammates. And the issue was that Russell Wilson had to be real which he's had a hard time doing. It's a character flaw where it's kind of like, I, I have to say things to appease people instead of just being real. And I think that Sean Payton looked through that and is like, okay, I think the, the quote I heard was, you're not President uh, Wilson, you're Russell Wilson. 
meaning stop trying to be a politician around here bullshitting people. Just play the quarterback position, okay? How about that? Just do that. Just focus on that. Don't be fake. Just get with your teammates and make this work. And the numbers were good, but you just know that there was a disconnect. The disconnect was is that Sean Payton did not have Drew Brees and Russell Wilson did not have Pete Carroll. And it just didn't – their characters and the, and the relationship did not work. That's why Russell Wilson is a Pittsburgh Steeler. Now, is Russell Wilson or Justin Fields in a position – where they could take the, the forearm to the throat from Mike Tomlin if his team underachieves because he will pull them into a dark room and yes. he will beat their ass. Are they ready for this, Wilson and Fields? Because he will do that. That that dude is Joe Clark with the bat. That's who Mike Tomlin is. So I would I, I would hope they are because I, I feel like watching Tomlin from a distance, there's tough love. But he's also he's fair because you see how he handles Pickens. Like he knows Pickens is a little fragile, but because he needs Pickens to be a great receiver, he treats him in a little a little way like he did Antonio Brown when he was there. You know, not not too much tough love, but enough where he gets the message. And then the guys around him, as you know, Tomlin has said for years, the standard is the standard. So there is the Steelers' way of doing business, and. If you're not going to do, do it the Steelers way, you won't be there for long. And Tom doesn't have to enforce it most of the time. The players around him know, hey, this is the way we do things. Hey, uh, Russell Wilson, this whole, I'm coming in here with this, I need an office with a fucking three projector screens and all. We're not doing that shit here. You yeah. know, this is, this is how we handle business. And if you produce, we'll love you. If you don't, they'll run you out of town because – I'm a Bears fan, but when I look at that organization, to me, that is the best run organization in professional football. So if you're going to a situation where the best run organization in professional football with one of the greatest coaches in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, you're set up for success. But we've seen that doesn't work for everyone because we saw Trubisky go there and he couldn't handle that. He couldn't handle that type of loving and because he couldn't have that type of loving he's now back to buffalo you know holding the clipboard so you you have to have some thick skin you have to be able to take coaching because they're going to coach you up if you allow them to coach you up you'll be successful if you don't then you'll be somewhere else you know next year so i think they both have a great opportunity to succeed you know uh i, I think wilson's a little longer than two so but i think uh Fields needs to learn a little bit. He needs to maybe watch someone like a Wilson work so he can pick up on how to do things better than he has so far in his career. And if he does, I think he could become their long-term answer to quarterback because the kid is uber talented. He's uber talented. So yeah. He's got to be able to do more than run with the football, though. Here's, here's what's, what's weird about both of these quarterbacks being with, with Pittsburgh. You have two guys that don't attack the middle of the field. Like, yeah. it, it, it's weird because both quarterbacks, they don't attack the middle of the field in the passing game. And this and it, what's really strange is Arthur Smith is the offensive coordinator. That's exactly what he wants. So I don't know how that's going to work, especially with play action. The other thing is that both quarterbacks rely on the athletic ability to produce. Like, fields will scramble, and then Wilson is going to look down the field whenever he breaks the pocket. So, I mean, here's one thing to put a bow on this. Russell Wilson will be not will not teach Justin Fields anything. You don't like think he, so? Okay. He, oh, absolutely, absolutely not. Like, like you, it's what you just laid out. He will observe from what Russell Wilson does, but it ain't like Wilson's going to be tutoring Justin Fields. Absolutely right. not. Right. Right. Russell, right. Russell Wilson. Right. Absolutely not. Russell Wilson is for Russell Wilson. And by the way, there's a lot of quarterbacks that know how to perform and don't know how to teach. That's a thing, man. That that yeah. some extent they don't have that chromosome to be like. This is – follow me. This is how I did it, right? Let me show you how. They know how to do it when they get on the field, but to show somebody, that's why some of the all-time all greats can never coach. True. They don't know how to do it. Like, like, but, but Russell Wilson is so into Russell. I saw the tweet. Russell was like, Justin, yeah, uh, let's ride. Yeah, Steel City. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, that was it's fake. Like, on, yeah. You, he paid a PR person to write right. that tweet. Um, 
because he can't do it himself. He's got a personality flaw. Yeah. Thank you, Lana, for checking in on YouTube. Uh, you hit that like button. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'm not a coach. Um, <laughs> Jay Crit on uh, on YouTube. Thanks so much for checking in. Uh, Eric Collins, the great Eric Collins, says on YouTube. He says, if Caleb Williams has has a rookie season like C.J. Stroud. Nobody's going to care about Justin Fields. Yes, no. I saw that on your Facebook. <laughs> yes, that, yes, and, 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 and that's exactly right. Uh, and Jay Critt uh, agrees. That is correct. I hope that Caleb Williams, and I temper my enthusiasm. I do. I don't even look at it for four wins. I'm not saying it's going to be a battle between him and Tyson Bajan. But what I'm talking about is, is that I think that there's a learning curve for the Chicago Bears with this young quarterback. And boy, pressure. I don't have to tell you how much pressure he's under. Yeah. But here, but but the thing is, though, I don't think that Caleb Williams is a person that is going to be all overwhelmed. Have you seen him speak? That brother can, is, has seen all the spotlight. He's dealt with the Los Angeles media for a long time. In L.A., it's about the Lakers. It's about, the, uh, about USC football. Dodgers are in there as well. But USC is a close second. The Chargers and the Rams don't matter. USC football is covered like an NFL team. Because that is their pro team for years. I think he embraces the pressure, though. I, I think he wants to be that elite quarterback. So I don't think he'll have an issue with the pressure of the media or the pressure of expectations. So I'm looking forward to it. Jay says that the Bears should have traded Justin Fields with a deadline last year. They pretty much knew that they were getting the number one pick. But did they? No. Did, I mean, at, what, at some point, yes, they, they had to. But – that took some doing. Like, did we know during at the Browns game? So the, the Bears were the, they weren't the number one pick at the at the Browns game, were they? No, they 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 were. The, the Panthers were like one and seven, but the Panthers also had the easiest part of the schedule coming up. So there was a chance the Panthers could turn things around quickly and no longer be the worst team in it in the football. So like it was touch and go. It was touch and go. Unfortunately, the Panthers management, you know, really uh gave. Bryce Young, everything he needed to fail. So that was good to see. The Fields trade was a no-brainer and drafting Williams. Yeah, I mean, again, Ryan Poles wishes he could get could have got into this draft and got more. Yeah. But look, but look at it, though. I mean, I don't get it, Cuzzo. I'm like, all, all these teams, you're telling me that Justin Fields isn't as good as Ben DiNucci? I don't know who that is, but I, I'm because I don't know who that is, I'm, I'm pretty sure he is better. So, yeah, it, it's – it's a crazy, it's a crazy league. Jay Crit says the polls did not trade Fields. He polls did that trade for Fields not to win the trade. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not about wins and losses. No. In, that, in this situation, you're just trying to move the asset because yeah. you just and, and and we need to address this as well. We have t- some time to address this as well. You and I have grown up with a lot of quarterback battles over the years with the Chicago Bears. You know, I mean, for for a certain generation, it was, it was all about Kyle Orton, uh, right? In in that battle that he had, um, there's been a plenty of quarterback battles over the years. I remember this, Harbaugh and Tom Zack. Yes, Harbaugh and Tom Zack, back and forth, right? Who's going to be the better quarterback? The answer was none of them. Right. Uh, <laughs> but 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 in this situation, it wasn't going to be Justin Fields and uh, the number one pick in the draft in the same room that just wasn't right. happening it wasn't happening and and i think that we talk about character flaws justin fields was not good with andy dalton being in the room he wasn't good with some other guy because he wanted to be the guy right away you recall this right three years ago I do. people I do. people were like you gotta play Justin. you gotta play justin and and guess what um that Nagy was right he was he was like he was he ain't ready yet just hold First on a time second. His life. Yeah, yeah. He was like, hey, we got to – just not yet. And and people on ESPN and everywhere else was like, you got to play this kid. You got to play him. And so when he was out there, the Bears were not equipped to handle the skill set of Justin Fields. I said at the time, it's not that Justin wasn't ready. The Bears weren't ready for his skill set. That Browns game where he got buried at Cleveland Stadium, yeah, with like nine sacks, it's because they didn't have protection for him. They were not ready for him. Nagy should have been arrested that day. <laughs> and, and fired as well. Yes, because he could have got that young man hurt. That's why. What's that? How's that look, Cuzzo? How's that look What's, to you on your screen? Looks good. Looks good. 
Justin Fields in a Steelers jersey. Redemption time for him. If you buy one, I will disown you. I will never buy that. I don't. I, I don't believe you. I only, I only support Bears quarterbacks. You like to troll. I, I can do. see you wear one. I yeah, do. You like, you like to troll. If you wear one, uh, you're not. I'm gonna take you out of my will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking you out of my will. You're privately placed in there, but you're not gonna get my albums and my uh, baseball cards <laughs> uh, because that Mark McGuire one is really expensive. Right. Really worth something, you know. That that Ken Griffey. That Ken Griffey's pretty good, but that Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco, man, that's. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to uh, Caleb Williams for now. I think that'll be the last jersey I'll buy for the next 10 years. So at least 10 years, hopefully. Jamie says that uh, Fields may beat out Wilson for the starting job. Uh, well, first of all, the Steelers said over the weekend, this is Russell Wilson's job. Now, one thing about the Steelers, you were talking about the standard the standard. They don't bullshit. Right. They put the statement out there. This is this is Russell Wilson's job. To lose. Yes. Like, but it's not going to be determined in preseason. Russell Wilson will start the season for the Steelers. How long he will start, I don't know. But it's not a it is not a quarterback competition. The Steelers put that out there over the weekend. It's not me making that up. Steelers wrote that. Smart. Sleepy <laughs> No, definitely not sleepy. <laughs> Lottie says he, he asked is why am I called coach? Am I am I a coach? I mean, maybe you should be. I mean, you've been doing sports so long, you know, you like a coach. I am not. <laughs> I, I am a fan. That's what I am. I am a I'm a fan. Um he, Lonnie asked, Will I ever uh, co host with Freddie Coleman? I've done that in my career. Yeah. I, I've worked with Freddie Coleman. He's one of the one of the great people in the business. Here's a guy here that was let's see I can say this. Freddie Coleman, I thought, um, deserved a lot more acclaim in his career than he's had because he's great. Um, you know, the one thing I learned about Freddie Coleman, I never told you this, Kelzo. Here's what I learned. When I was working nights all those years at ESP in Chicago and in the score, all those years working at night, I never felt like, oh, you know, I'm the worst on the station because I, I never felt that way because – of what 11 jobs or 12 jobs in Chicago sports radio to be able to be on the air. So I never felt down. There's sometimes I felt down, but not because of my job status or my shift, because I had all day. I right. could go out and do whatever I want and then become. And so Freddie Coleman said on a podcast not too long ago, he said, you know, this is when he's working nights. He works afternoons now, to be clear. He works afternoons on ESPN radio with Harry Douglas. It's a fun show. And it's been a long time coming because Freddie should have been working afternoons or middays or mornings years and years and years ago. But he worked nights all those years, that smooth voice on ESPN Radio, that smooth voice he's had over the years, right? He said on the podcast, Kelzo, he says, I, I, I love my status at ESPN Radio because people come to me for tomorrow's news tonight. Right. Meaning that he has the first dib before back in the day, Mike and Mike or Trey Wingo and Mike Golick would come on. He'd go. I got the news first because I'm on at night. So I have first blush at all the news before the morning show does. So they are following me. And I was just like, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> it's exactly right. If I'm working nights and I've got all, especially late nights, and I got all the news in front of me, it's like, well, before the newspapers hit the porch, I got all the news. It's true. So I can comment on it first. So I've always loved Freddie Coleman, just a good dude. And so I have worked with him before. Will I work with him again? Who knows? This business is tricky. But uh, no, no, Freddie's a good dude, man. That smooth voice. He, I mean, we do. We go into a meeting in Bristol, right? And this is his show. And I work with him for the first time. And I'm like, that's Freddie Coleman. Ah, he's one of the goats. And he says, young blood, what would you like to talk about tonight? <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm just right. like, ah. <laughs> it's pretty cold. Is he talking to me? Um, Curtis Jackson checking in from uh, Farmington, Minnesota. 50. <laughs> He's Windscar45 on Twitch. Thank you very much for watching on Twitch. Uh, Landon Pyramid says, Do you really think that Poles was given more 
from other teams but decided to do right by Justin and send him to a team that he wanted. Is that good GM business for the Bears? Um, well, this is the story that came out from Courtney Cronin from ESPN.com that he wanted to do right by Justin Fields and send him to a team that he wanted. And he said doing right by him is not sending him to Carolina. And it, and it may not have been significantly more. It may have just been, you know, just moderately more, maybe a fifth or something. So I don't think that is, you know, I, I don't think passing up on a fifth or something like that is is a huge deal. So I think he, he made the right decision. Um, yeah, I think it's good business. Yeah. You know, you know why? Because there's some people in the league that's playing right now that feel like Justin Fields got screwed. I'm talking about players. Yep. But then when it gets around that he went to the Steelers, who's going to complain about, oh, damn, send him to a brother, send him to Mike Tomlin. All right, well, yeah. what, what are you going to say about that? Because I was like, true. he didn't he didn't send him to uh, football Siberia. He sent them to world-class Rooney uh, family Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolutely. And, and, and has a great opportunity to start, by the way, at some point this upcoming season, because it is Russell Wilson. If Russell Wilson sputters in this offense, then Justin will get his opportunity. Um, trading him for a wide receiver, I would say no, Jay Crit. I would say that if the Bears didn't have Keenan Allen. You can get your wide receiver at nine if you want to. I would prefer the Bears to trade down to get more picks. Right well, now they got four. I completely agree. There's, this is a, a deep draft of wide receivers. Uh, yes, Mini Q, absolutely. You can get receiver help later on. There's no question about that. Also, uh, you can use free agency and the draft next year um, to hit the ground running. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a rich wide receiver draft um, this year. But, again, this is what I'm talking about, Cuzzo. Like, as excited as you and I are about the Bears, there's more even after this season. Again, it's an evaluation of Caleb Williams. How good will you be? Okay. Yeah. So here's here's now you look at the season. If you underachieve, like, okay, what else can we get him? We got two veteran wide receivers. We got two veteran tight ends. We got three veteran uh running back, what two veteran running backs and a second year player in Roshan Johnson. We added to the offensive line. Okay, so what else can we do? And so that's the evaluation that you make, right? Yeah. So you just add on from there. There's no doubt about that. Um Jamie says, I'm not sold on Williams. Uh, try to trade number one and two to get extra picks and take Mays. So what does Mays do? That, what does Drake May do? do that uh, Is that English? What does Drake May do that Caleb Williams is not? What, be what, tall. What's, be, a, be a couple inches taller. That's it. I like Drake May, but the idea that you're passing up Caleb Williams because what? Yeah. Because you, you, know, you saw him against Notre Dame because you saw the one game? That's, you know, I, I don't believe that. Yeah, I'm a big believer. Like, you, you don't do, you know, the the weak thing of being scared to make that pick. You make the pick, and you live with the results of it. Uh, Luminous on YouTube says they don't want Caleb in Chicago, plain and simple. Who, who's they? Oh, who's they? No one cares about RG3. So, you know, Hood, I'm, I'm hopeful, hopefully getting ready to, whenever the Bears play Green Bay, you know, I'm going to join Caleb. I'm lying, but let's pretend I'm telling the truth. I want to join okay. Caleb Williams and, and, and get F Green Bay on my nails, you know, just to solidarity purposes, you know. So I'm going to roll with him and, you know, and get that. I just, uh, I find that just, I just need to know who they is. Could you tell me who they is? The Fields Cult. Okay. So they don't want Caleb in Chicago, plain and simple. Plain. Yee, plain and simple. Uh, even RG three, uh, yeah, R R yeah. To my RG three, who this is bad, badly worded. I I know what you're saying. You're talking about RG three. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a clown. RG three is a clown. Uh, we still got a few minutes here. We'll, let's pull this up. And by the way, as we start to wrap this up, leave more of your comments and make sure that you share this out on YouTube or on Facebook. It's one thing for you to be watching. We want you to share it out as well, so everyone else can jump in. I'm gonna, I gotta find this clip because I need uh, people to hear how ridiculous this is from uh, RG3. Now, again, you could take into, uh, into account that he's a quarterback as well, RG3. You know, I, I don't even think – I think it was more than that because then he's saying he, he, wants, he wants Caleb Williams to go to a team that he thought didn't do right by him. 
you know, so why would you want Caleb Williams to go to, to Washington to play for the commanders when you didn't believe they did right by you? So I, I believe it was just a hot take, you know, where he was looking to get some attention, you know, maybe his girlfriend didn't give him enough love in this weekend or whatever it, it may have been, but it was complete trash, you know, uh, and it shouldn't even, and I know the Phil's coat grabbed the hold of that, but it's bullshit. You know, it's complete bullshit because there isn't a team that's drafted early that can say they've done well with quarterbacks historically. So it is what it is. Um. All right. Jay Chris, uh, obviously a, a listener of your to, uh, to uh, Cap and Jay Hood. Yeah, I swore on the air today. I swore on the air today. I, haven't, I don't remember last time I did that. That's what happens when you work, do a wrestling show on Sirius XM where you can say whatever the fuck you want on Sirius right. XM uh, on Sundays and then come to work on Monday and get riled up about the Bears and almost say the word, the full word. I said half the word, so it was good enough to for a dollar. It was also a good cause, birdiesbookbank.org. Uh, but yeah, yeah. But I, but this is our platform. I say whatever the fuck I want to. Uh, so there's that. Let me... Uh, Let's do this, Cuzzo. God. So, okay. Let me do this. Let us hear now from um, RG3 for those that missed it. I know you don't want to hear it, Cuzzo, but you got to. But for those that missed it, and this I'm is how we do team. it. This is how we do it here because I have not mastered the opportunity to learn how to put this as a screen. So we're just going to play it right off the old phone here. Ghetto, the hood way, right? The thoughts here from RG3. Listen. See if you can pick up on this. See what he had to say. Because he was going in on uh, Justin Fields. Let's see. Oh my gosh, what the Chicago Bears did make zero sense. Chicago Bears traded Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a 2025 sixth round pick that could be a fourth rounder based off the playing time. Now, the compensation is a problem. We'll get to that later. But the real message here, the NFL just told Justin Fields, we don't think you're good enough to get it done. That's right, 31 teams, including the team that just saw you for the last three years in the Chicago Bears, don't think you're good enough to be the franchise quarterback. Now, I think they're wrong. I believe Justin Fields has all the traits of a quarterback that you have to have to be successful in today's game. He can beat you with his arm, he can beat you with his legs, and he can beat you with his mind. He is supremely talented. So I don't know if it's pissing me off. It's got to piss off anybody that's on Team Justin Fields, but it shouldn't piss off anyone more than Justin Fields himself. You know, a lot of people say you got to do things to prove yourself right, not to prove others wrong. Well, for Justin Fields, you're past that, man. Almost every team in the NFL said, nah, we good. We don't want you. Nobody wanted you except for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So now you owe it to the Pittsburgh Steelers and yourself to go prove those other 31 teams wrong. You have to go with the mindset that, you know what? My game's going to be so real, I don't need any of y'all's props. All you need is a team to believe in you, and you got a great coach, a legendary coach in Mike Tomlin, who can help you become the player that you need to be. But you have to take that mindset and let it be known that I'm going to take it out on every single team for the rest of my career, and I'm going to make you guys eat your words and your thoughts about me from the first three years. Eat your words. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner as I terrorize you. Now, when we get to the compensation, the GM for the Pittsburgh Steelers is a con artist. Yes, his name is Omar Khan, but he just fleeced the Chicago Bears. He just robbed them in broad daylight, right? Because he got Justin Fields, not for a 2024 six-round pick that, you know, the Bears can use this year to help build around Caleb Williams or whoever they decide to draft. But he got Justin Fields, who was the Chicago Bears starting quarterback last year, for a 2025 six-round pick. Meaning that the Bears are literally getting nothing in return for Justin Fields this year season my gosh you're talking about matt eberflus and ryan poles going into a year where they have to win they gotta win 10 to 11 games to save their jobs and they got absolutely nothing for justin fields this upcoming season not only that there's other players out there who got more in their trades Thank you, Sam Howe from the Commanders. He's their starting quarterback last year. Uh, Sam Howe and two picks go to Seattle, and the Commanders get back uh, a third rounder and a fifth rounder. Are you done, Cuzzo? 
Mac Jones. I was, I was trying to, you know, put the rope down, but uh. <laughs> What's even more alarming to me is that the 2024 free agency period was like musical chairs for the quarterbacks, but not one of those teams said to themselves, "Justin Fields is our guy. We can be the team that's going to get all of his potential out of him and help him become the franchise quarterback." We believe he can. You're talking about the L.A. Rams. They brought in Jimmy Garoppolo. We all know Matthew uh, Stafford's not playing for another 10 years. <laughs> okay. There you have it. He sounds like a uh, a bitter woman. You know, so, uh, I mean, the market is the market. So so we can all look in, and say what we believe his value was. We're not one of the... 31 GMs the Bears were negotiating potentially with. So they saw him as a backup, for at least for now, and they were only willing to, to pay a certain level of compensation for a guy who was basically a, a rental backup. You know, and I, that it is what it is. So in, in essence, Fields is traded for Caleb Williams. And if Caleb Williams plays at an elite level, we won't remember what the field's compensation was by week eight. You know, if he plays I, at a uh, level, we won't care. I would say that listening to RG3, Cuzzo, he sounds like someone who would know when every, when every single door closes on him. Yeah. He was trying yeah. to play for the Bears, and, and Poles told him no, too. So like, let me go in there and back up fields. And Poles is like, no, you ain't it. You know, we'll roll with – We'll roll with Nathan Peterman instead. You know, we feel that's better than having you in the building. So it is what it is. <laughs> okay, I gotta share this with you, cuz <laughs> boy, you can get got so so careful. This is why you're not on social media very often, because you can get got so quickly. So Caleb Williams is a Twitter account, a fake Twitter account. It's IE Caleb. Victim of Chicago Bears football parody account. Um, Caleb Williams, this fake Caleb Williams says, respectively, I'm just trying to go wherever I'm wanted. And RG3 quote tweets him and says, I appreciate you, my dog. And whoever wants you will be getting a franchise quarterback. There's your answer, Bears Twitter. If Chicago Bears want him, he won't be pulling the Eli Manning. That's not Caleb Williams' account. Right. You see this, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not Caleb Williams. That's yeah. not his account, but he's, he's he's talking to a fake Caleb Williams, RG3. But RG3, as I mentioned, he sounds like a scorned lover. Like he he knows what it's like when all the doors are slammed in his face and nobody wants him. That's what Justin just went through as far as teams that he chose right. to go to. All right, let's finish this up, sir. What else do we have here? All right. Uh Caleb's been in the spotlight since high school. How he handles the pressure uh, has to do with his parents. Uh, Think about the Williams sisters, Tiger, Jordan's parents, uh, Joe Jackson. They prepared him for this. No question. Right. Right. You know, when it is so funny about about that situation, there's always criticism. It's like, well, he 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 grew up in a a one parent home. You know, he only grew up with his his grandparents and all this kind of stuff. Here is a two parent home. And there's criticism for that because his dad cares about his his future. His dad cares about his future. That's a negative. A, and, hold on, a black dad cares about his future, and that's a negative. Preach. Okay. Preach. Yes, I would agree with that, sir. Uh, yeah, if the students don't uh, change or fix those mechanics, it, it really won't matter. There's no question about this. Um, Berlissimo. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're still the number one afternoon show in England. Um, uh, Berlissimo does a great job of breaking down Bears tape, has a strong Bears opinion. We appreciate his opinion uh, from the UK. What, what are you doing up, by the way? You should be sleeping right now, shouldn't you? My God, bruv. Um, trading up for, I've been, have you watched Top Boy, by the way? I have. Very, very good show. You should be into more of the black uh, British cinema. That's right up your alley. You'd, be, you'd enjoy that. Uh, trading for a receiver that's absolutely your top choice would be okay, but there's tons of good receivers in the draft. It is. It's a deep draft. There's no question right. about that. Um, 
Eric Collins going back in the day would uh, talking about the late uh, Les Grobstein, great overnight host. No question about that. Um, uh, Randolph says that nobody cares about R- about RG three. The last time someone cared about him, he was getting carted off the field. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Why on college? He's a very good analyst, by the way. On college, RG three is. He does a very good job. I mean, he's he brings something different to the table. Just, but he's in the hot take world, man. Yeah. He just yeah. this is what it is. Like this is. I don't. I never feel like I'm giving hot takes. I'm just giving my opinion. I'm as I always say, and you know me, Wiley. I'm someone that just if if we was at the bar. We'd be talking about this. Yeah, I just ha- I just happen to have a microphone every morning. It just they're not takes; it's just opinions. I'm old school like that. Yes, Curtis Jackson says he's just trying to get his own show. <laughs> Carolina Blue two one nine one. Thanks so much for checking on on YouTube. No doubt about it. <laughs> Fairlissimo, check it in. Yeah. Is you, are you going to a budget Stephen A. Smith? Now stop that now. Well, I mean, hey, when you when you are demonstrative and yeah. you have a platform, you do whatever you want with it. Do whatever you want with it. So that's just that's fine with me. So so yeah. So some uh, some thoughts there. Thanks so much everybody for checking in. We really appreciate it. Randy G says that RG3 is a clown. I agree. <laughs> so, uh, so, so there you have it. Yep, there you have it. All right, Cuzzo. All right, Cuzzo. And, and what are your final thoughts? Your final thoughts, because I I want to just tell you, I really like where the Bears are going with the choices they made. You know how many years that we saw like one or two big swings by the Bears, and like that was it. You see Ryan Poles looking at this situation with Keenan Allen and DJ Moore with DeAndre Swift, with Gerald Everett as a backup tight end. And by the way, I thought that was a luxury at first, but then on top of it, my thought was, well, now you got younger at the tight end position because you don't have Mercedes Lewis anymore. So, so so I saw Ryan Poles come in with the, with the plan. He came in with the plan. He's been very disciplined. And within two years – he has put the Bears in position to have long-term success, you know. And if he pulls this off, he's going to be on the Mount Rushmore of Chicago GM. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I will. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll leave you with this one. Sean remembers uh, that Sean ECMC says I left this comment in one of your recent videos, but I go way back with you. No stammering, no stuttering, no ums, no us. You know the reference. You you recall this on the show like it was ah it was when I was at the score yeah it was uh, I forgot the name of the the thing we did but we had people to call in for thirty seconds without stammering and without stuttering and you get a prize if you can do that don't say uh don't say uh I think that might have been it yeah that might have been it that was yeah that was stolen from Howard McGee I think I think I stole it from Howard McGee <laughs> sports speak. Now that, see, that's why Eric knows, man. See? see? Come on, bro. There, there, there's a longtime guy. Give EC his flowers, man. Sports speak. That was the name of the – yes, it was 30 seconds. You couldn't stammer. You couldn't stutter. I said, be better broadcaster than me. I think that's my setup. That's what it was. Yes, thank you very much. See, Eric Collins remembers. If you were listening, Wiley, you would have enjoyed that segment back then. I, I was. I was. <laughs> I was <so laughs> All right. Time now for the mascot. And by the way, share this video uh, on YouTube, on uh, on right. Facebook, on Twitch as well. Make sure you just share this out so that way everybody can be part of our Bears conversation. There it is. The show mascot. There he is. Sit, 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 Oh, sit. my God, please. Sit, sit. He's out of control, sit. Rocky. Completely sit. out of control. Sit, sit, sit. No, no, no. Sit, sit. Sit, sit. He's not, not going to sit. Rocky. This is sad. Sit, sit. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, please don't show that. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs>
Okay, let's not show that again. Hold up that T-shirt one more time, by the way, because we've got merchandise that's available now. You can order on my link tree. Sit, 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 sit. Link tree. There it is right there. <laughs> no! Don't bite my shirt. What the hell? You know how much that thing costs? Rocky. For Rocky, our mascot, and for Cousin Wiley, this is Jay Hood. Thanks so much for checking out the podcast. Thank you so much, everybody. Sit, 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 sit. Just sit. out of control. There you go. Why do you let that dog bite your hand? Don't you have any marks on your hand? No, he doesn't actually put force on it. It just looks like he is, but he doesn't. Okay. Just don't understand. It's all right, man. Guys, thanks so much for checking out our podcast. We'll talk to you next Monday on Under the Hood with Jonathan Hood. So long, Rocky.